So here we have a Canmore. And full of water. Try and turn it on. Something stuck in the water pump. Most likely. So we'll have to take okay, a so There's a couple ways to get to this one. You can tip the machine back. If it's full of water, it's kind of hard to do. If you tip it back, you can tip it back and get from it from the get to it from the underneath, or you can pull the the front panel off. To f pull the front panel off, you need to remove these fenders on the sides here, and they just pull. They just pull right off. If you just grab from the top; they'll just pull off. And then there are two Phillips screws that hold the front panel in place, one here and one here. And you remove those and you can pull this panel loose here and then get to the clips that hold the front panel in place. There's a lid switch here that actually you need to disconnect and then reconnect. Make sure you reconnect. Then there's the two clips that hold the front panel in place. One there and one there. And there's your disclaimer. And so we'll take this apart. Basically to get to this, to take these, these holding clips off, you just need to stick a flathead screwdriver in here and then pry back. Stick it in there, pry back, and disconnect your lid switch and make sure you reconnect it when you're done. Okay, so we got the front panel off, and we tipped the machine back. Uh, there's still a little bit of water in it, uh, but the water, most of the water has been siphoned out. It was siphoned out by dropping the back drain hose down. Here we, we're on a back porch, so it doesn't really matter because uh, it's got slats and the water drips through the slats. So no big here if we dip, deal if we drip a little water. We got substantial rust here that'll have to be treated um, with some WD-40 or some OSPO. Um, so we're going to take the pump apart. Basically, we re remove the clips here, these two clips here. Pull the pump out. Maybe have to disconnect it. See if it's see what's in there. It's probably going to be a sock or something in there. Okay, good news and bad news. We got the pump off. These clips, two clips on the, on the top and bottom of the pump, hold it on. The good news is that if you stick this in here, the pump spins freely. So, and we look inside here, we don't see anything inside there. So that's the good news. The bad news is that the motor is hung up somehow. It could actually be a bad capacitor. So I'll try and spin the motor manually and then I may have to replace the cap capacitor which is up here in the control panel. But, you know, this capacitor, the start capacitor for the motor is not in the console, it's down on the side down here. If we take a look at it, we see that there is actually a loose connection here. If you look up in there, you'll see that there is a loose connection. Basically, this capacitor is shot. And so, yeah, it's shot. So that's that's the problem right there. So, yeah, that wire should be connected on there, and it's not. And so that's going to be the fix. Okay, so... I put a new capacitor uh, alongside. I haven't hooked it up yet, but it's just 
I, I've got it in place here, and so uh, let's give it a try here. So if we turn on spin, yeah, we see it's going to work. It's, it's got another problem. See how it abruptly stops like that? That is what I call a drive break, and that will cause the drive coupler to uh, eventually fall apart. And so once again, take a look. That's the abrupt stop. So that that stop, that stop, that's a little bit too abrupt. And so this one needs to have the, the brake lube. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so you can tip the machine on its side. And so what we're looking for is this. If you see the yellow spring in there, the yellow spring, that is the brake right there. That yellow spring is the brake. And so what we need to do is I've got my zoom oiler. And see if we can do this here. I take my zoom oiler and sort of get it ready to put out a couple of drops here. And then we take the nozzle of the oiler and it's got to go right between that yellow spring and the brake, the brake bell or the brake drum. And we just stick a couple of drops in there. And then we turn it on. And this one, I actually have a bypass on the lid switch. And then we'll eventually work it in there. And we'll just keep uh, adding couple of drops of oil. Now the yellow spring doesn't always fall in the same place. That yellow spring um, will maybe on this other side and so the best place to work with it is right here on the lower end of that uh, bell hub or the drum. And so once again we just get the oiler with the long nozzle and get it ready and stick it up in there and just a few drops between that yellow spring and the the uh the brake the brake drum or the brake bell turn it on work it in there and eventually the oil will get in there and loosen that up a little bit. At this point, it hasn't done it yet. So you can see now the the, the spring, the yellow spring, is not is not visible. So what you can do is probably over on this other side. Is you just briefly turn it on for a second and turn it off, and then see where that is. And we see it's not in sight yet. Now you can also turn this by hand, but it's a little bit kind of gunky in there, so I'm not going to stick my hand in there. So we just turn it on a little bit. That that will turn turn the system. So we see the spring again. It's not quite down at the bottom end, but um, if you're careful and not get any on the silver part which is the clutch, uh, that's the main thing. So, we get our oiler ready and then sort of stick it up in there and avoid that silver part. Now this is actually, it may have dried grease in there. I don't know how that could have happened, but And you can see it's already starting. It, it's already basically stopped, stopped jumping. So that's fixed. That part is fixed. And so that one.
not happen for quite a while. Now these springs right here tend to get dry, so it might be a good idea to oil that spring. If there's any rust on it in particular, and any other rusting parts, it would be good to, particularly with this one here, I'll put a couple drops of oil. That inner one is completely dry. Doesn't have any, and that one is dry too. So we'll take a look around and fix her up. So that's your tip for today. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, please send me a donation. And another tip on these with the multi speeds, you always want to shut it off before you change speeds. I could burn out that speed control switch. Um, I also have a how to make money in the appliance repair course online. It involves a year of coaching and a link to 100 repair videos. And uh, if you're interested in that, you can contact me as well. If you need a professional, contact your local professional. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you.